Hello and welcome to Beekman's World. I'm your host, Michael Riley. With me is Jason Amherst. I'm a couple of puppet penguins. And Billy Carter. You shoot them, I loot them. The dis- let's, let's get going. The dismal oubliette. Uh, I'm reading more about uh, the loom and it's kind of fascinating. I'm fascinated um, with the word oubliette. I wonder uh, in his solo work, he utilizes found object animation in which he takes objects as varied as coffee pots and humidifiers and turns them into elements of political satire. He's referred to Elizabeth Dole and Margaret Thatcher as right-wing nutjobs. And a fierce what critic of U.S. foreign policy. Uh... In 1989, he appeared in The Unnaturals, a sketch comedy series featuring Tim Blake Nelson, John Mariano, and Siobhan Fallon Hogan. Oubliette, a secret dungeon with access only through a trapdoor in its ceiling. Interesting. So if I made a updated Shakespeare play about a, uh, a young guy from a rich family trapped in a cellar that he got, that he got thrown through a trapdoor, would that be Romeo and Oubliette? Oh! <laughs> Zaloom has written and performed 11 full-length one-man shows, including Fruit of Zaloom, Sick But True, Fruit of nice, Zaloom, and The Mother of All Enemies. Yeah, you don't get any better than Fruit of Zaloom. I'm sorry. He peaked with that as the title. Just like I just uh, peaked with apparently... Romeo and Oubliette. <laughs> 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 like, dude, that's yeah. the smartest joke you're ever going to hear on this show, guys. I'm sorry. That's just how it goes. <laughs> uh... <laughs> For more uh, information on Oubliette, watch uh, Labyrinth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's I was say, fucking uh, true. I, I, I think the word is in Enter the Gungeon, and I just never put two and two together. Oh, Oubliette, okay. yeah. Well, I think we've said yeah. it more in this episode than it's ever been said in, in real life. Oubliette. Pretty much. It's just a nice Apparently, word to uh, say. Oubliette. It is, it is. It's a funny word to say. Oubliette. Oubliette. It so sounds like he's produced- it just sounds like you're saying "ooh fuck" in Russian. Oubliette. <laughs> uh, Paul Zaloom has produced two films. By the way, if you're wondering, we're we're still talking about Paul Zaloom because we ended the last episode talking about Beekman's World. So because yeah. we're big fans of Beekman's World. <laughs> yeah, I watched it all the time on Saturdays. It came on yeah, right Saturday after. Yeah, I watched it in syndication too. I watched that and then Trivial Pursuit, and uh, there was a couple other game shows that were on, but they were always. It always started with Beekman's World. Yep. Uh, mockumentary titled "In Smog and Thunder: The Great War of the Californias," oh, piss. recounting a fictitious war between Los Angeles and San Francisco, and another film, Dante's Inferno, a retelling of Dante's journey through hell set in Los Angeles and performed in the style of puppetry called Toy Theater that uses paper cutouts for puppets and sets. He's, he's got a real thing for puppets. Uh-huh. Oh, Lord. We watched Beekman's World. That is <laughs> true. Yeah. Um, wow, he's, some of my work, he's performing. I, I, like, I like puppets, too. <laughs> Do you enjoy the puppetry of the pianists? Uh, well, apparently he's taught puppetry and uh, Cantastoria at uh, colleges and universities throughout U.S. and Europe, including CalArts, RISD, Emerson. Shit. I've never heard of that last one. Uh, that's, <laughs> which, that's, that's, which university that's is that? the South Harmon Institute of Technology. Technology. Oh, that's right, yeah. It's an undergrads or whatever the show was. I don't know. That's uh, a movie. Yeah. Undergrads. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Shit. That's in, uh, that's Michigan uh, University. Shit. (laughs) Ho, ho. Yeah. Because I'm OSU fan. Ho, ho, ho. (laughs) I enjoy dunking on the less fortunate. (laughs) Oh, wow. He appeared in a YouTube video as uh, recent as 2016. So making an appearance in one of Captain Disillusion's videos, debunking free energy devices. 
Oh, and I did not realize this. He's openly gay. Has a daughter uh, with his former wife and describes his ethnicity as half Syrian, half wasp. <laughs> White Anglo-Saxon Protestant? No, an actual wasp. Yep. Like the insect, the flying insect. <laughs> I'm Beekman. Or, <laughs> or you know we are I would not recognize him if I saw him nowadays, though. Well, he doesn't have he, the, he, the yeah, weird, the frizzy. Uh, he didn't. He doesn't have the frizzy hair that uh, Be Beekman had. That's the only way I've ever seen yeah, him no, is like with that the, hairstyle. The the photo of him that they use for the Wikipedia article is from 2004, and like he he looks like a serious Tony Shalhoub. Nice. I mean, Tony Shalhoub can be a serious Tony Shalhoub. When he tries. Too, but I mean, like, when I, when I think of Tony Shalhoub, I usually think of Monk or uh, Galaxy Quest. I think of 13 Ghosts. I think of Wings. You think of Wings? <laughs> wings. Oh, Wings. Nobody well, cares I've what you had. Listen, nobody, hear, nobody, yeah, nobody cares what you had for lunch. That show was iconic. <laughs> I've, I've never. Yeah, no. The the middle name is kind of a dead tell for him being part wasp because it's Paul Finley Zaloom. <laughs> Hi, to tell you, Ty Finley. What are you? Hey, what are you trying to tell me, Michael Riley? What are you trying to tell me? <laughs> <laughs> Live the life of Riley. <laughs> it, okay, but you can have all the debt that comes with it. <laughs> have fun. <laughs> I, I just remember that being a line in Ed, Ed, and Eddie where, like, Ed says that, and it's like, that makes no sense. Nothing Ed That's said makes sense. Riley? No, no, it was Ed. It was all non sequitur. Much like this show. Yeah. Later, Hosen. Breakfast plate. Salamander. Jizmop. That's actually uh, on topic. Yeah, that usually is with us. <laughs> yeah. Um, tortilla shell. Unfortunately. Um, gangster oven. Did you say gangster oven? Yes. The drive by bacon, bitch. <laughs> I did not realize that uh, Beekman's world was based off of a comic strip. Yeah, you can really? you can with Beekman and Jax. I always used to see that in the uh, Sunday morning paper, alongside yeah, such luminaries my, uh... as Blondie and uh, Andy Cap and uh, Kathy. Kathy and. Kathy. Poop, pooping and far. I forget all the names of the comics. Uh, if there was Shylock any Fox, com was that it? What is it? Uh, Fox. Maybe? I don't know. I don't I remember. Think it was like you know what? If there was any comic book strip woman that I would seriously want to get with, it would be Blondie. <laughs> you want a valid, a vapid, shallow cunt? <laughs> She's not. You ever read the comic strip? No. <laughs> I think I've made that pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah. Nah, it's all right. That was that was Kathy. That's fair. Maybe I'm confusing Kathy and Blondie. <laughs> all, all I remember from Kathy is she would freak out and be like, She's the one that was like, I need a man, and I don't know. I can't do shit in my life because I'm single. Things like that. See ya, bitch. She, 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 it just wasn't funny. A uh, gag a day comic strip drawn by Kathy Guys Wright. It ended in 2010. But nobody noticed. Yeah. And yet, Mary Kathy, a woman who out. struggles through the four basic guilt groups of life. Food, love, family, and work. 
Sucks. And not one. It was very Garfield esque. Garfield was fu- is funny. Yeah. Yeah, if you're like. Also, Garfield. I feel like Garfield is more likely to get laid. Also. <laughs> I get fact, all he, the pussy. In, in fact, he does because he does have a girlfriend. Yeah. I'll Ner- be right back. Normal. Not normal. <laughs> When he sends, he says he's gonna send him to Abu Dhabi. He really means <laughs> he's gonna put it in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the pink cat, Arlene. That was it. That's it. Yeah, Arlene. Wasn't that only a thing in like the early, like in the, the early eighties, like in the early days of the first comic appearance, nineteen eighty. Um, she is Garfield's main love interest and official girlfriend since twenty seventeen. Oh. I thought she stopped appearing after a while, but maybe not. No, apparently they still put her in there. All right, well, there you go. It's like John's roommate, Lyman, who just disappeared after, like, 1985. <laughs> and or, nobody uh, ever or mentioned the him uncle again. in Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah. Uncle Max. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm just reading the Garfield Wikipedia article now, and I'm like, huh. This is interesting. Just seeing like the uh, different uh, things. Yeah. <clears throat> Lyman's true fate was revealed in the Garfield show episode Long Lost Lyman season three, where Lyman is revealed to have become a wildlife photographer who left John in his home to go to a country called Franistan. When John learns that Lyman disappeared while searching for a mythical Bigfoot like creature called the Zabadu, John Garfield and Odie travel to the jungle to find him. Lyman is revealed to, in fact, be the Zabadu and use the guise of the Zabadu. The Zabadu mantle was passed to Lyman by its creator, an elderly retired doctor named Sam, who had since passed away from natural causes who needed someone to take his place to scare poachers away from the area and takes in Odie again. However, he realizes that Odie misses John Garfield and the rest of his friends and returns to John and Garfield's home to give Odie back to John. The episode ends with the quartet hanging out with each other and Lyman promises to visit when he can. He Apparently he was voiced back. by Frank Ferranti. First appearance, 1978, as a regular, 1983, cameo in 10th anniversary strip, cameo in a newspaper, April 2nd, 2013. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, apparently they just kind of like go, hey, remember this character? Yeah. Used to be John's roommate. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we pointed that out. Yeah. Oh, I, I walked away. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I can tell. Yeah, we know. <laughs> uh, yeah, we know, Bill, you big f- and, and, and to bring it around Republican, Republican idiot. <laughs> there's there's uh, Dr. Liz Wilson. Played by Jennifer Love Hewitt. What? Are you serious? Yeah, Jen- yeah. yeah. I never knew that. In the live action hot. and animated movies, she played with by Jennifer Love Hewitt. Oh, I knew, uh, I knew it was her in the live action. I didn't know she also did it in the in the animated. Uh, yep. Uh, originally voiced by Julie Fuck Payne, me. then voiced for a while by Jennifer Love Hewitt, and then voiced by Julie Payne again in the Garfield show. I got. Demolished by a fucking vor. Even weirder, though. Uh, Normal. Being voiced by a woman originally, Desiree Goyette. Uh-huh. Um, and then Justin Bieber. Then in Garfield, oh, the movie funny. portrayed as a Siamese cat, voiced by David Eigenberg. <laughs> uh, and then the Garfield show, voiced by Jason Marsden. Okay. Max from yeah. Goof Troop. Yeah, I, Jason Marsden did play. Hey, normal. Yeah. You sound a lot like my kid. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, Bill Farmer. Uh, a light player. By Audrey Wasilewski. Audrey Wasilewski. And oh, wow. Squeak the House Mouse, originally voiced, uh, originally voiced by Greg Berger. And the 2004 film uh, was Greg replaced by Burger. a mouse named 
Lewis, voiced by Nick Cannon. How do you have time no, to do because... that in between having 700 kids? Well, this was 2004. Oh, so he only had 200 yeah, he, kids. He... <laughs> <laughs> he just got off of uh, do, be on the show All That by that point. No, he just, just got off. He yeah. just got off of his last girlfriend. <laughs> She's tired, man. <laughs> she needs a break. <laughs> Her vagina you know, is like uh, a slip and slide I, I, now. You know, at one point, I forgot that he was married to Mariah Carey for a yeah. while. Yeah. yeah. Jury's out on how that happened. <laughs> I'm uh, still not quite sure. He, you know, at, that, at that point in time, she was so much older than him. I mean, she still is. It's not like there was a time machine that made him younger than Nick. Well, you, well, you know what I'm talking <laughs> about, but I mean, like, they were. she was, what, at that point in time, at least 20 years older than him? She's always 20 years older than him. I mean, okay, well, she is he was born in 1980, <laughs> and Mariah Carey was born in 1969. She got 11 years on him. Yeah. 11 years. Okay, but still, nonetheless, that's a big age gap. Half your age plus seven? That's the formula, supposedly. Yeah. So she probably falls within there. Maybe just barely, but I think usually, so. Usually it goes the other way around. Usually guys get... They, they were married women. for eight years. Yeah. They got married in 2008, so he was 28. And she was 40. <laughs> 39, she would have been. She would have been my age. My age. Yeah, Let's see. Half your age plus uh, seven for, for her, that would be uh, 23, 24 oh, and a half is the lower limit. So, yeah. She's he's, in her 50s. He's within the purview. It's, uh, holy crap. Friggin' 12 kids. Oh, my God. By how many different women? 1,100. Uh,. He's listed as having one, two, three, four, six partners plus having been married to Mariah Carey for eight years. He a hoe. Yeah. Yeah. Selita Banks, who was a Victoria's Secret angel. Uh, Brittany Bell, uh, model, dancer, beauty pageant title holder, who was crowned Miss Guam 2014. Guam. Mm -hmm. Um Bree Tiesi, um, I don't know, it links to something, but it's just a point in like another article. Uh, Lanisha Cole, uh, model for eight seasons as a rotating model on The Price is Right in both Bob Barker and Drew Carey eras. And then the other two don't have uh, Wikipedia articles. Boy, my dog just got on my bed. Congrats! Here, You've dog. met Louie Mike. Yes, it's been a while. Cute little guy, isn't he? Yes, admittedly, it's been a bit, but yes. He got right up in your face and started smelling your nose. <laughs> yep. You oh, friendly he, little guy. He would shed a brick if he smelled me now. I live in a house with like twelve dogs. <laughs> oh no! No, he'd look at you like. What's that smell? And then he'd be like, "Oh, okay, I love you." It's a lot of female, a lot of female laugh. dogs. So he'd be like, "What's that smell?" <gasps> Pussy. <laughs> oh, he's he's fixed. That doesn't matter. Oh. My mine's fixed too, and he still hums like there's no tomorrow. God damn. Oh, it. you got a dog now? Yeah, I've had one for a bit. What type? What, what type? Uh, he's a uh, Shih Tzu Jack Russell mix. Oh, you got a Shih Tzu now too. He's a Jack Shit. <laughs> you know, I don't know him, so I don't know jack shit. Ha! Ha ha! Who? He he ha ha who? Is he a friendly little guy? Yes, very. He was also the humpinest dog I ever met. He had, before we were able to get him fixed, he impregnated like pretty much every female dog in the house and probably had about 100 kids. 
Oh my god, he a hoe. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I just realized Jack the Garfield Russell? movies put out by a freaking Jack Russell. What? <laughs> oh, sorry, go oh, ahead. Me, sorry. Oh. Oh my God, that hurt. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jace. Go ahead. Uh, apparently, uh, Jim Davis sold the company Pause Inc., which is now Pause Incorporated. Uh, to Nickelodeon. Oh, geez. Oh, no. There's yeah, gonna be Nick Nickelodeon I'm, bought it in 2019. There's going to be feet everywhere. Well, maybe that's why he was in Nickelodeon All-Stars, the game. Yeah, that explains it. So, so Nickelodeon uh, CEOs, we own you, Orange Cat. Do our bidding. I don't okay. want to. I, I I just want lasagna and a pink cat. That's all I want. <laughs> so, no, go do this movie for uh, Sony now. It was actually, it was a good movie. It's funny. It's, it's actually really funny. It's amazing how many production companies worked on that, though. Holy oh, crap. my God. That's that is what I thought um, in the beginning. I'm I'm there with my friend and me and her are sitting there. Oh, and Emily was there too. We were sitting there and in the beginning, studio logo like, after studio logo after studio. Oh my logo. God! Sony pops up and I'm like, oh, Sony. That's who made this. And then it was like six others after that. Yeah. The first four, the first half hour of the movie is production animation. logos. <laughs> One cool group. Wayfarer Studios, Stage uh -huh. 6 Films, Andrews yeah. McNeil Entertainment, and Pause uh -huh. Inc. Yeah, I was like... That's because Andrews like... McNeil Entertainment is actually uh, Andrews oh, McNeil Syndication, you. formerly Universal Press Syndicate. So, yeah. I, I looked over at Nicole. I said, do you think enough people worked on this? And then she says, I wonder if the catering company is coming up next. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I said probably, and then then I said then I saw the last one. I said That's probably it right there. <laughs> and we laughed. <laughs> it, it was a lot. Normally it's like two or three, you know what I mean? But like my uh, God. subsidiary of Andrews McNeil Universal AMU, based in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, Andrew M Andrews McNeil Syndication, which includes Go Comics, Andrews McNeil Publishing, and Amuse, which is a clever acronym for Andrews McNeil Universal Syndicated Entertainment. Amuse, okay, makes sense. Jesus. Yeah. But I can tell you what, Jace, it's actually worth seeing. Oh, it just, uh, I would go still out in theaters right now because it only came out about a week ago yeah uh, yeah I no, it it edged out furioso which honestly i would rather see what furioso yeah wait no. there's a Mad new Max. hold on there's a new garfield movie yeah oh, with Jesus. uh yeah, new. chris pratt i am it, it, out it's of touch actually, it's actually I'm chris pratt <laughs> and actually, garfield it's actually Let's really good. Go. He actually he actually played a good Garfield. I to be uh, quite honest. He gets the character. I'm out of touch. Yeah, I'm out of just... touch. I'm out of time. I'm doom bottom deep it... super flume. Yeah, what, what a about... freaking uh what a freaking cast list. Chris Pratt, Samuel L. Jackson, uh -huh. Hannah Waddingham, Ving Rames. Nicholas yes. Holt, Cecily Strong, yes. Harvey Guillen. <coughs> I want Sam Brett Jackson. Goldstein. I want Sam Jackson to have played uh, Normal. You not go send me to Abu Dhabi again, motherfucker. He plays Garfield's uh, dad. Oh. Bowen Yang and Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg has a cameo in it. He's 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 probably in it thirty seconds. 
at the moment. Maurice, a blue Maine Coon with an eye patch, and another of Vic's former crew members, being Garfield's yeah. estranged biological father, played by Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. It's actually really... Ving Rhames really played a bull. Yeah, and the whole time when I'm seeing him play a bull and he's talking, the first thing that comes to my mind is, we have the meats. <laughs> That's the first thing that came to my mind, and I said it out loud and everybody laughed. Yeah. We have uh, the meats. Oh, apparently Jeff Foxworthy has a cameo too. Yeah, he does. Zapped bird. If you've ever yeah. cameoed in a Garfield movie, you might be a has been. He there's an electric <laughs> fence, and he goes, and they go. Does huh. he does he whiz on it? Tell me he whizzes on it. No, he lands on it. God damn it! But, but he lands you can't on it. Have goes, nice things. <laughs> Don't whiz on the electric, electric fence. fence. <laughs> he gets zapped, goes to hell, and he whizzed says, on the electric he fence. Didn't he? That's <laughs> yeah, on it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, he was on the electric fence, didn't you? <laughs> oh, uh, that show. <laughs> that, that just reminds me of also, like, you know, uh, freaking uh, Rocco's Modern Life. You're in the heck! Yeah. Oh, yeah, where they have it scratched out and it's, it's hell, but it's scratched out. This and is, it's right this is the lamp from heck? The TV from heck. Remember, he goes. Don't, he goes. Don't you turning, mean he that? Goes, no. Do you want to get <laughs> censors? <laughs> Don't you mean he uh, Well, censors. He's got utter head. He has an utter head. No nope, sports yep. out there. Oh, dear God. I was like, oh, that's gross. Even when I was a kid. <laughs> Ha! Sony removed the 8K tag from PlayStation 5 boxes. Gee, is it because nobody really owns 8K televisions and nobody cares? Yes. What, 8K? Yeah, nobody nobody owns 8K televisions. They can't afford them. Truth. Think about this. I own a TV that's 4K. Same. All right? I don't. <laughs> well, whatever. You know, 1080p. 10, you know, any, everybody owns at least, you know, most people own a 1080p or a 4K television. You know what I mean? Around that thing. I own a 4K 8K, television because it was cheap and it was on, like, clearance when I got it for, like, 300 bucks. 8K. And I've had it for years now, so. Is, 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 like... It's like, okay, I'm going to buy this TV over here. It's $400. 4K television, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's $400. Would you like this 8K curved screen uh, uh, thing? How much is it? $5,000. No. <laughs> yeah, no. Remember when they had 3D televisions? That was a gimmick that died quick. Yes. Thank God for that. That's oh headache, my God. headache, they headache had city. 3D DVD or 3D Blu-ray and it just went oh, away. That, that failed quickly too. You want to know what else is failing quickly? The 4K Blu-rays. It's like yeah, you have to have a special Blu-ray player. And I mean, I could have the Blu-ray player with my TV, but nonetheless, I'm like nobody is. It, it, it's like it's in higher definition. Nobody cares. If you remember anything from the 80s and 90s, the format wars between Betamax and VHS, Betamax looked superiorly better. It did. But what was cheaper? VHS. VHS. And the one defining factor that, that, that determined the, the, the clinched VHS was porn. And VHS won out in the end. But the funny thing is, right now, we got two formats, two video formats right now that are coexisting with each other and are selling at the same rate right now. 
DVD is still in production, still being made, still popular. And then you have Blu-ray, which is still, you know, well, that. But nonetheless, this has never happened that you had two coexisting formats that are equal. That's about what I would say about that. This has been media format history with Billy Carter. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, but I'm, I'm the type of guy that has like one one particular movie and has like just about every format <laughs> for it. That's kind of like how I almost every format for it, like Ghostbusters. I have it on VHS, I have it on DVD, I have it on Blu-ray, I have it on Laserdisc, I also have it on oh, CD. That's, that's me in Star Wars. I've got that yeah. in, uh, yeah. I've, I've got several versions of it on VHS alone. I even have it on HD DVD. Wow. Okay. Woof. Yeah. Uh, uh, me, now, meanwhile, uh, did you see the recent uh, announcement about Kamen Rider on Blu-ray? No, I didn't. What, what, which, uh, Media which... Blasters is doing a box set of uh, Shin. Um, I think it must be the way that Jay the Discord, and Zillow. the program, compressed your voice there for a second. But it sounded like you said Media Blasters. Oh, it's <laughs> Media Blasters, which yeah. is a good uh, company, by the way. Yeah, uh, awesome. and uh, cool if if you get the box set, uh, limited edition from their website directly. Uh, it comes with a bonus fourth uh, Blu-ray of Kamen Rider World. Okay, how much is this box set going to be? Uh, 70 bucks for four oh, Blu-rays. Seventy cents. I'll buy it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I pre-ordered it. <laughs> Shut up. Is it, money. is it, uh, now these are movies? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, because, okay. uh, this this was the dark period after uh, Black RX. Oh, when they were putting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Kamen, so it's, Kamen so it's Shin, Shin Kamen Rider that. Jay and uh, Zillal. J. A J. It was in the original Kamen Rider yeah. J. Yeah, J was the one that uh, I think uh, went big, like J for Jumbo. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Because. Uh, I don't think they were able to get the rights to the, the little spin-off film that they did with Jay with uh, Ultraman. The rune of black magic throbs evilly in your hand and whispers dark thoughts into your brain. You learn the inmost lore of the Hell Mother, Shub... Uh... You now know that she is behind all the terrible plotting, which has led to so much death and horror. But she is not inviolate. Damn, damn it, Lovecraft! Armed with this rune, you realize that once all four runes are combined, the, sh the gate to Shub... Uh, Lovecraft's cat. Shub Inward Wrath's Pit will <laughs> open and you can face the witch goddess herself. So what was the name of your cat again? Shub <laughs> Nigerath. <laughs> I'm just going to say it like that. I think if you say it like uh, lo it, 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 the cat. fucked up thing is that it is actually pronounced the way you think it's pronounced, but a lot of people yeah, just it, mispronounced it, it. it on purpose so they don't have to accidentally say the N word. I I always say uh, uh, either Nigerath or Nagorath. See, you could say Nagorath. I mean, there's a lot of people that actually Nagorath. think that that's how it's Shub supposed Nagorath. to be pronounced. But because yeah. Because you have to think about this. These beings, their names aren't even how we pronounce it with our mortal it tongues. Be unspeakable to unspeakable. human tongues. Yeah, unspeakable. Yeah. So this is how we would be able to pronounce it. It's yeah. it's the, the also, Judaic mindset of Yoah. Also, H.P. Lovecraft was just a horrible racist, so... Well, he was more of a xenophobic. It wasn't necessarily that he hated. He couldn't help it. The man was born with syphilis. <laughs> he was. 
Yeah. I, I know that's, he that's... was. It's just it's funny that that's... <laughs> That's why. No, it, yeah. it literally drove him insane. The he sy- was the syphilitic he he was Now, now he did get married, and he was married to a Jewish woman. So, you know, being a racist, I wouldn't think so. But he was more a xenophobic. He was afraid that the culture that. I don't. I don't know if you meant to meant that to sound this way, but you said being a racist. I wouldn't think so, implying that you are the racist. And oh no, I'm not a racist. Okay. I said. I said. I said him. I said don't him be being racist. a racist. I, I am, am a building. A building. building. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Damn! I wish Dan was, was here. Between, <laughs> there was a difference between being a racist and a xenophobic. I think xenophobia is more of you're afraid of other cultures coming in you know what's funny is that with day not being here all of our bullshit is going unchecked (laughs) (laughs) yeah i know because like every five minutes dane would be like no i'm out of here i quit he would he would have done that to the whole shub nigroth uh uh talk actually i think that's how it's supposed to be pronounced mike nigroth is it I've heard that it's supposed yes. to be pronounced the way you think it's pronounced, the inward way. Yeah. As in that's, that, that's as in the wrath of, you know. Yeah, no, it's it's Nogoroth is uh, how you're actually supposed to pronounce it. I mean, and that's exactly and that's how Lovecraft pronounced it. And honestly, Nogoroth. even even pronouncing it that way, you got to be really fucking careful. <laughs> to... You, you kind you got to really put the. Ugh into it for not the, yeah the goo ooh it's, it's very uh, guttural you gotta really pronounce that you otherwise it's just you, you you're like, just what, a racist like <laughs> like how you're like how you're supposed to now, uh, pronounce Cthulhu is Cthulhu Cthulhu that's how you're supposed to pronounce Cthulhu Cthulhu Shub uh, uh, Cthulhu uh, wrath <laughs> uh, now with, with with that it's a Shub Nagurus that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. It's supposed to, you're supposed to put guttural sound into it. Uh, can you tell if an, I'm an HP Lovecraft fan? <laughs> <laughs> I love syphilis. Well, not that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've read everything the man's ever wrote. No wonder he created the- eldritch horrors. Oh. He was dreaming of them due to his syphilitic night terrors. He also read of a he read a lot of occultic books, so that probably also contributed yeah, that, to a lot of his yeah that didn't his help psych, his uh his psyche uh, his, his psyche yeah because some of them books I mean I I've known people that went to, <coughs> that, that used to be occultists that went to my church and they said you will he said they said I don't recommend you reading I'm like sorry well I don't want to read them they said but the stuff that's in there it would would make the most Hardcore horror fan uh, pee and crap their pants. That's that bad. <laughs> Hardcore horror. Got it. Hardcore whores. Yeah. Hardcore I mean, books, you know, learning about how to manifest demons and other eldritch horrors, basically, and what you have to do to accomplish such things and and yeah, I'm not talking yeah, like your Cthulhu typical your, your typical, you know, witchcraft book that you could buy from Barnes and Noble. I'm talking like this stuff is like grimoires that somebody copied by hand for the past couple hundred years, you know what I mean? Those Oh, the kind of shit that uh, Freerun's always looking for. Like the really scary stuff. You know what I mean? Like the actual You, you haven't you haven't seen that anime yet, have you, dude? Uh, no. Free Rinna Journeys. That, oh, it's so good. I mean, stuff that you would, like, walk into, like, a Freemason's library and find and stuff like that type of stuff. It's it's a very nice, high-quality, like, freaking fantasy show. Like, yeah, right. occasionally got some comedy in there, you know, but for the most part played seriously. Uh, you know, very uh, Record of Lodos war kind of vibes. Yeah. I was uh, uh I was record, of, record of Lodos War meets uh, Slayers, Anna. 
you know, I'm not making fun of anybody when I when I say this, Jace. So I, it was just my response to this one guy that walked up to me who was a douchebag. And uh, I, I had a shirt and I was walking up and I had Pippa. I have a Pippa shirt. Pippa Pipkin shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. My uh, my cousin, I think, has that same shirt. Well, no, mine's different. I had I, I'm actually wearing it right now. I had I custom made this shirt. All right. Black oh, T-shirt. Okay. Got, her, got her on the front of it. Uh, because her shirts don't fit me because I'm a big f- fat Viking man uh, <laughs> I'm a big uh, fat Viking man I mean we know when you're like like 300 pounds most VTuber shirts won't fit you uh, yeah you ain't gotta tell me so, uh, yeah, so I, I custom made a shirt and I'm walking around with it and I have I have some of my magical girl pins on my vest because I like anime. <laughs> and this guy walks up to me. Now, mind you, he was wearing a Randy Orton shirt, and it's Randy Orton, full view, you know, wearing his ring gear, you know, half naked on the shirt. This guy walks up to me and he says, Hey, he goes, What do you got like a pink, what do you have a pink bunny girl on your shirt? I looked at him and the ball like anime he goes yeah when he starts going on and I go, he go, you know i said you want to know why i'm wearing this cute bunny girl a woman on my shirt he goes yeah i said i said because uh, i'm a heterosexual man i said and w- so why do you got a half naked muscular man on your shirt <laughs> he goes shut up i went yeah yeah let's go there doodly doodly do <laughs> I'm like, don't. I'm like, you live in glass houses. Don't throw stones. Bingo. I mean, I'm not making fun of anybody's sexuality here, but I'm just like, you're you're the one walking around, you know, criticizing me for wearing a cute bunny, you know, girl. If you've seen some of the fan art of her, oh dear God. Um. I mean, that goes for any VTuber. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. Yeah. Well, there's one. <laughs> I was on DeviantArt, of course. If I was well-known, I would be freaking, you know, yeah, draw me as lewd as you want. I don't give two shits. (laughs) Well, this one right here. give me a big old penis. It's like a point of view shot of her, and she's like bent over, and she's looking back at you, and you see the butthole and everything else. And and you see the butthole. To be fair, that's kind of, you know, in line with Twitch meta for a while. You know, when people had the freaking, uh, you know, asshole cameras and freaking mirrors behind them and shit. You know, there was that one yeah. woman who, like, literally every time she bent over, you straight up saw nothing but chocolate starfish. And the hot dog flavored water. Which is cum. <laughs> N- no. Bong water, but still. Why was there bong water in her butthole? I don't. And that's what I'm wondering. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. I don't get it. Why? Why is she? Why is she butt chugging bong water? It, well, you know, sometimes you're just thirsty. I'm not going anywhere thirsty. for a while. Chug a bong water. I've, Ch- chug I've a never bong been water. Thirsty to drink bong water. I mean. Be quite honest, using a bong is a waste of water. <laughs> yeah. Just get, a, just get a bowl. Just 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 get a pipe. You're not wasting anything. Yeah. Just get insert third paraphernalia here. Just just get the gummies. That, that, that's even better. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Then you have nothing. then you don't have just to get, fuck with any of that shit. <laughs> no, you just get the straight what you want, pure what you want. Like Snoop Dogg, he stopped smoking weed. He says, "I'm done smelling like a skunk." He's so so. He's eating gummies now. Now, of course, uh, there's Mike Tyson's uh, branded gummies. <laughs> it tastes like Evander Holyfield's ear. Oh, they are literally ear shaped. Ah! <laughs> way to go awesome. all in. On, way to go in all, all in on the joke there, Mikey. <laughs> you can't say that he don't have a sense of humor. I do have a sense of humor. I'm just gonna beat the fuck out of you. <laughs> you know, you notice out of everything that that man did, you know, 
people still really like him. And his his television show, Mike Tyson's Mysteries, that was show was hilarious. Oh yeah, no, it was. Norm McDonald was the best part of that show. God rest his soul. The pigeon. Um, and also him uh, wanting, you know, going to beat the ever-loving crap out of uh, Jake Paul. Calling uh, him out. I, I really uh, hope that that happens. I don't they think... put it on hold due to... I don't uh, say it's on hold. Well, yeah, I don't think got, it's going to happen. He's got, he, he got sick. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Logan's like, I'll, I'll fight my brother. Some of the stupid ding dong diddly ds. You know, I'm just waiting for that one person. Like, you know what? I'm gonna end all this, and they I meant just to walk say, up like, and just shoot Jake Paul. I, I, I actually, for that I meant to say ding dong diddly dumbass, but I, I ended up saying the full actual quote instead. <laughs> I'm just waiting for that one day that oh, someone uh, just gets tired of him and just shoots him. I guess I, mean, I am. I guess I'm a wait, ding dong diddly like that, dumbass. That that one time. Uh... Pat Sajak accidentally gave away the puzzle answer and the person still didn't get it right. By the way, by the time you're hearing this episode, he will have retired from Wheel of Fortune. His last show is June 5th. Yeah, I'm going to be yeah, watching uh, that. And, and boy, boy. Which is today. Has this Which final tonight. season had some... This final season has had some uh, humdingers. Which, uh, uh, by the way, that is tonight. Um, so that 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 clip I shared with y'all last uh, night. it might be Friday's show that's his last show then I might have got the date oh, wrong okay I don't know why he would stop middle of the week so seventh yeah yeah My Fuck God, off, I, I've fiend. not lived in the world I've, I've not lived in a world without pet Sajak uh, being on TV. I know, right I was gonna say he's still alive <laughs> No, I mean, uh, I'm living world in a world without, without Pat Sajak. He just, Pat Sajak, he just retires from Wheel of Fortune, goes, walks down the street, and just dies <laughs> spontaneously. I, I mean, well, was so really long, everybody. Was uh, you know, uh, uh, Trebek, him dying and still he was still on TV. Yeah, because they had the episodes taped and him still. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was just weird. It's like, oh my god! It's like a ghost is talking to you. <coughs> Did that show? Yeah, Pat Sajak I mean, gave away the puzzle answer when he said, "Quite frankly," and the person still didn't get it right. <laughs> there, there have been a few infamous Wheel of Fortune moments. More of them recent than ever, though. Like, somebody did not get fresh tropical fruit. Mm. Remember the one guy that guessed Scooby-Doo, and it was, and it was like, what, you know, like three letters were on there? It was like something uh, to Scooby-Doo. Actually, uh, the most infamous incident, 1993, the reason why slang is no longer a category because nobody could say Budinsky right. They they kept on, like, there was one letter missing from the puzzle. They're all trying to guess it. The producers kept on saying, no, that's not how, that's that's not the word. Because they're like, Button Sky. Uh, Budinsky. Button and it's like, <laughs> that's how we like, to, that's the way we like to fuck, is Button Sky. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> In that, in, that, in, that, in that one, in, in that one anime uh, meme uh, position, <laughs> you know what I'm talking oh, about. What is that? The Jacko position. The Jacko position, where it's just like yeah, yeah. the vagina straight up for your pleasure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the the most recent one. Uh, well, there there was another one apparently that made Pat Sajak just drop his card. It was during the final uh, round, and it, the solution was fixing a leak. And the contestant almost got it, 
and then admitted that they almost guessed that the solution was taking a leak and then he just dropped the prize card on the ground like well that's it I'm done now I know how Steve Harvey feels that's that's when Pat Sajak decided to retire <laughs> it was at yeah, that moment considering that uh, quite literally a few days ago put it in the uh, butt at the time of this recording yep right in the butt right in the butt and Pat's just like, uh, that's right where I'm going to kick you. four-letter word, apparently. And that's, that's right, and that's where I'm going to kick you. So where Pat Sajak was thinking. <laughs> right in the butt. <laughs> My toe is going to go right up your pee hole. Probably went, what? I, I think that guy was just saying it for the lulls. Oh, guaranteed. I guarantee he was just saying it. He was like, oh, it's not right, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'll make national television. People will talk about it for years. Right in the butt, Bob! My name's Pat. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> right in the butt, Pat. Butt, Pat. <laughs> That's just the theory. A uh, game theory. <laughs> butt, Pat. Theory. That's just an anal theory. Anal theory. Good old a butt gay pat. theory. A gay theory. Happy Pride. It's July. It's June. Not in when this airs. It won't be. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. At this point in time, it is June. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also and it's also Men's Mental Health Month too. Since oh, when? Is, uh, since Billy, when has forward? that ever mattered? <laughs> <laughs> Billy, you looking forward at the time of this recording to uh, the Devolver Direct? Devolver Direct. The continuation Remind of the Devolver me. Cinematic Universe. Billy doesn't uh, know Devolver what you're Digital. talking about. <laughs> it's uh, Devolver Digital's annual uh, parody of... Uh, the video game uh, trailer presentations. Oh no, I haven't. No, no, I, I don't even know what that is. I'm sorry. Oh man, <laughs> they've got like their own like little cinematic continuity of sorts. Like it, it started off with like a video. I want to say in, like 2017, and they've been doing them every year since. They are beautiful parodies of what is wrong with the gaming industry. I love when they they are like I love when I I I love when I assume that somebody is into something just because I am and then I find out later that I that I was wrong and I look like a buffoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into a lot of things, but if I don't know I'm about into them, I'll be really butt open play about it. and shitting, but I'm not into <laughs> Devolver Digital. <laughs> Uh, I mean, like, they, they are arguably the best indie uh, publisher out there. But their presentations are, like, basically adult swim-level masterpieces of, like, what the fuckery making fun of the video game industry. Even though they're part of it. <laughs> I yep. mean, that that's the joke, is that they are the indie industry. You know, they're, they're making fun of the triple A. The industry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, so they're they're making fun of like Sony and Ubisoft <laughs> and Activision and the rest of them and like chasing trends and shit like that. Like in one video, there's like we found a way that you can directly give us your money through the screen. And they're just like, I'm Sony, I'm Sony, leave me alone. <laughs> oh. How dare you come at me underwater? I'm Sony, I'm Sony. We're gonna censor it because it said baloney. <laughs> we all know what baloney means. Yeah, it's a luncheon meat. It's talking about a penis. I'm Sony, I'm Sony. Law and Order Organized Crime stars Chris Maloney. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking stretch. You, you really had to stretch for that one, didn't you? Yeah, I'm the goatee guy. Wait, what? You're the goatee guy. <laughs> no. 
My bo- You're already on here, everybody. My he was originally going to My asshole burned. My asshole burned. My asshole burned. Uh, I mean, what, what's worse, Goatsy or Jar Guy? Uh, yes. Jar Guy? <laughs> yeah. Yes, both. Both. They're the, equally The answer disgusting. is yes. <laughs> in, in Soviet Russia, Jar fucks you. What's what? What's just as bad, Mr. Hand? <laughs> Mr. Hand is what I use all the time. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, no, yours is Rosie Palmer. Rosie Palmer. Palmer. It's so fucking bad here that like I can literally see it kicking up in the air, like dust in a freaking sandstorm just in the wind I was just getting ready to fucking sing that Bill <laughs> all we are is dust in the wind but, well, well if it was me it was, in the parking who, lot. Hey, if it was me it would be who just broke wind <laughs> there's a rotten twinge in the wind Brent <laughs> I'll kill you! Break in the wind. Billy is just breaking the wind. Billy is just breaking the wind. There's a comedian called Tim Hawkins, and he does a parody of um, Dust in the Wind, and it is Who Just Broke Wind. That's what the. It's, it's pretty funny. Yeah, it's funny. It's actually, it's, it's, it's funny. Yeah, it's just funny. I, yeah, everybody, I'm Jay Leno. Yeah, it's just funny. Yeah, yeah, it's just funny. I like fapping in the... What? Fap in the wind. I would I would recommend... I would recommend against fapping in the wind, Bill. <laughs> Well, it make a mess. No, I see said the blind man tapping into the wind. It's all coming back to me now. Oh. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. I'm out of here. Thanks, Dane. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time... Dane said he's nickel. done. I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Thanks, Doofenshmirtz. Matt. Pooping in a bucket. Dan Povenmire's easily recognizable voice. <laughs> I I follow him on TikTok, Dan Povenmire. Then that's why he's got a restraining order out against you. Oh, I have a quad damage. <laughs> Fuck this shambler. Oh, shut up, Mike. <laughs> I need that Billy Carter guy to get away from me. <laughs> many times I've actually said that. Oh, shut up, Mike. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm Stop. secret exit level, level exit. Oh, secret level. We secret, secret level. Exit. I found that secret exit. Poopy, 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 And uh, we're gonna have to check it out next time on the thing. Save. All right, that's it. Flag because it's yes, and they have this song. It's called Roundabout, and it will get you flagged on YouTube. Don't try to sing it at karaoke because it's nine minutes long, and the DJ will get pissed. And you're like, why? It's a, we could have had three other people sing a song in the time that it took you to sing this song, you stupid mother. Anyway, uh, thanks for joining us for Backseat Gamer. If you like what we do, please hit subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. <laughs> for Jason Amherst to Billy Carter, I'm Mike Riley saying I'm totally not a DJ at a karaoke gig and totally not had that happen to me. Goodbye. Liar! <laughs>